What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scooby and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now you guys know we do a ton of commercial diving, public safety diving, underwater salvage. And we've talked about in several of our videos that we go out and do underwater surveys. And we haven't really made that many videos on that. So I thought what I would do today is actually make you a video showing you exactly how we conduct an underwater survey and what they're actually used for. Now, as I've stated previously, a lot of the things that we can do, you as an open water diver can do this. This is not anything outside your training other than a little bit of overhead environments, which we would encourage you to be trained on before you did. But um, you want to make sure that you are being safe when you do something like this. Maybe find a mentor or go to work for, say, a commercial company that uh, can teach you how to do this as well. And then you can get into doing exactly what we do as well. But we got a little ways to get up the lake. I'm actually training a diver today on how to do this as well. So hopefully you'll kind of get to see how training goes um, when we're doing things like this. But yeah, we got a little ways to get up the lake here. And of course, hopefully we'll have a good survey. Travis, what do you think they're doing right here at the bridge? So from what I understand from the talking to wildlife and some of the other people, they're taking core samples because they're, they're fixing to expand the bridge here to uh, make it four lanes all the way into uh, Alexander County from the Hickory <laughs> side to the Alexander side. So they're taking core samples. I'm not real sure how that machine works, but it's pretty interesting to uh, watch how they do that. So it's probably safe to say since there's no dive flag, they're not diving. No, I think it's, probably like just a, drilling. it's a drill that they mm -hmm. drill down into the, to the ground with. Um, but I've watched them over the last few weeks. They've been at each column, I guess, so they can uh, mirror the columns for the new bridge. Pretty cool. It's about time we get a new bridge. This one's about collapsed. It looks like it's going in the, kind of in the position where the old bridge is. Yeah. All right, guys, before we get up here to where we're going to do the survey, I want to show you something that's really neat to Lake Hickory that a lot of you guys might not know exists here. And this is something that you can actually come out and visit as well. But check this out right here. Can you see that? That's an actual castle. How cool is that? And the cool thing about this castle, it is an Airbnb. So you can actually go online and book a stay there, you know, regardless how many nights you want to stay. That's pretty cool to actually see a castle out here in the foothill mountains of North Carolina. And yeah, the guy that actually owns it is an actual sir over from England or something like that. But yeah, pretty neat to see out here on Lake Hickory. Well, we are currently working with the uh, IX3M2 GPS model here from Ratio, and we are going to be logging the GPS coordinates of this particular um, location because we have to document this for as surveyors for the construction crew that's going to come in and redo this dock. So I'm working with this computer right now, trying to get it to connect to satellites, and then we will go from there. The first thing, Travis, obviously, we're going to draw a sketch of what we're dealing with here, what we're looking at. I've got a big old bumblebee up here in front of us. <laughs> but uh, you're going to draw a sketch here, and I want you to make note of all the poles and the location as well. So you can use the compass there to kind of say that the dock is facing land at a certain degree or a certain heading. And then, of course, you can turn it 
and do the same thing facing out. So kind of draw it, just create you a legend. And then when we go underwater, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to map it out underneath the water. All right, Travis, just prior to getting in, as you're getting dressed there, I'm going to make a note. We're in about 28, 29, 30 foot of water. So we know that's back here. Transducer is right back there. It looks like we got several feet past our vessel to get around the dock. So I'm going to say deepest depth that we should be dealing with is probably about 35 going to be max because it is just basically a sheer wall right here. So what we'll do is once we're geared up, we're going to start on this corner and we're just going to run a line following a compass heading just to where we no longer have a shadow basically and that lets us know that we're at the end of the dock then we'll just kind of go all the way around following our compass heading and come back up and of course whatever heading you got uh, from your initial inspection on top would be great and then uh, we'll document everything underwater film everything that we can check the bottom check the composition check the contour whole nine yards and then uh, once we get back to the shop we can draw them up a map and do a report Sound good? Sounds great. I think we're going to be dealing with a lot of rock today. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. There's rocks everywhere here. So go ahead and get geared up. We'll do our gear checks, and then we'll jump in together and go from there. Weights, releases, all them are good. Air, air's all the way on. Good air, good air, good air, all good air. Begin with review and friend, friend, final okay. You good to do this? Awesome, check me. Check air? Yep, you're not on. Not on? Let's turn you on. All the way. We're almost due north. So that's perfect. So we'll go north. We'll go west. Yep. We'll start off going due north, then west, and then south. And we can kind of survey up in here too. Kind of go from there. You ready? Alright guys, I'm going to try to walk you through exactly what we're doing and how we conduct a survey. Uh, first thing we got to do is of course get to the bottom and you'll notice as soon as we go under we run right smack into a big pile of debris here. Uh, but there's several things that I'm looking for and if you look through this debris you're going to start noticing that there are solid structures there and you'll start seeing the outline of big boulders. Um, so the two things that I'm actually looking for is bottom composition and bottom contour. Of course, the bottom composition is going to tell me what it's made out of. I can test to see how deep it is. I can probe it to see how far down we can get inside of it. And then, of course, the bottom contour is going to tell me the layout of the bottom. Is this a sheer wall? Is this a steep incline? Is this a ledge? Uh, all those things are very important to us when we do a survey, and it's also going to be important to the construction crew as well. 
But as you can tell, uh, there's a, a ledge here. I'm actually sitting on the ledge here. You can see where the drop-off is directly in front of me. I'm making a quick note of my depth here, um, of where this ledge is, and I'm also getting my compass navigation or my heading down uh, that I got on the surface. That's going to kind of let me know which way to go. Now, when you have a sloping bottom, kind of like we do here, it's very easy just to follow that sloping bottom. But just as we did on the surface, it's very important that you know your actual depths too because I don't want to overshoot the end of the dock and go way out into the middle of the lake or the middle of the cove or even the middle of the channel. So there's several things that I'm looking at there on my computer. I'm getting a uh, navigational heading, my starting depth, and then I want to make sure I monitor my depth so I know when to make my turn. But now that I've kind of got off that ledge and I've dropped on down to the next uh, area of here, I'm going to go ahead and follow the sloping bottom down, and I'm testing the bottom. I'm basically probing it. I can just stick my hand down in it, stick my fingers in it, and kind of tell what it's made out of. Uh, constantly monitoring depth here. I'm about 26 feet, as you can tell. And once again, I'm still monitoring the bottom. I'm looking for heavier debris, rocks, big tree stumps, anything that could actually be a hazard or cause um, some type of blockage for, say, the dock builder whenever they're trying to install poles and stuff to you know, build a new dock. But now that I'm coming down to the end, you'll see right here is a large stump. That's something that I've got to make note of, of course, um, for my report for both the homeowner and the dock builder here. And of course, it would appear that we've got a large tree here that I've got to deal with too. So that might be something that they need to drag or move out of the way before they start uh, pile driving posts and things like that in. So I'm just making note here, I'm writing it down. Uh, and kind of, and you can't really see it on camera, but I'm also judging uh, what direction that tree's in so I can kind of draw that up on the map as well. But there you can see I looked at my computer, got the depth, got the navigational heading, and uh, kind of, you know, I, I can jot that down for them basically. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my turn here, and I'm turning due west. We were very fortunate on this dive that uh, the dock faced due north, so all of our 90 degree turns were just northwest and south super easy to do here but I'm trying to stay at a consistent depth so I don't overshoot the end of the dock and you should see here briefly I'm gonna run right smack into the pole on the west side of the dock itself so as I'm swimming along uh, I should run right smack in that pole that just that's a good confirmation that my navigational heading is exactly where it needs to be and I'm not overshot the dock as well but there you saw there was some center block or something on the bottom still probing the bottom that's why you see just like that that, where I stir it up, I'm just probing it just to see how deep it is. Uh, I think at one point we got about a foot and a half penetration of just silt, which is a good thing. Uh, but there is the west side pole of the, uh, or the current pole of the dock. Uh, a little bit of extra debris there, nothing uh, too major to worry about, no trees or anything. I'm going to stop here a second and just double check my depth. Um, and then confirm that I am making another 90 degree turn to the left, which would be due south now. And then, of course, it's very easy to come up this end of the dock because um, we're just following the incline back up because we kind of know the layout. I'm also checking on my buddy there, uh, Mr. Travis. He's kind of lagging behind. It's first time doing a survey with us, so I'm trying to teach him as well. And then I'm going to start my way back up the incline. Once again, all we're doing at this point is simply checking the perimeter. Uh, there you can see I put my hand on a, a fairly large uh, rock. Uh, when you replace or rebuild a dock and you don't make it a floating dock where it kind of slides up and down the pole, uh, you make it a freestanding dock, a lot of times it takes tons and tons and tons of poles uh, to go into water. So I'm checking all around the perimeter where they're going to put it. There's a little bit more debris. There's a little chair that we come across uh, probably from the previous owner. Um, or it could be from the current owner as well. Some more debris here. This looks like some just old building material as well from the when the dock was built. There's another little tree they can pile drive through there. There's some more. A little tire somebody threw in probably as a little fish habitat or something. But uh, yeah, we're just going to continue on up the incline here. And I'm just doing an overall perimeter search. That's basically the, how we start these things, just to see what's there. And I should be coming up. There is the south side pole on the front, I believe. Oh, that is a freestanding pole as well. So that's from a previous dock that was here before the one uh, that's there now. So I'm uh, going to make a quick note of that as well. Here's a little bit more trash and debris. It looks like a cover from some type of solar light that blew off. 
so uh, that shouldn't cause any trouble to the new dock builders but now you're starting to see we're coming back into the larger boulders so this is going to be the upper side of the dock the shore side of the dock or what we call the south side based off uh, where we're at and now you're going to see the boulders from the rock wall that we looked at um, so this is the area of concern here uh, depending on how large they make this dock and how close to shoreline they make it this is where their pile driver is probably not going to be able to uh, drive post in they're probably going to have to drill um, they may even have to drill and put metal post in versus say the wooden post or they may make the option to uh, extend the uh, plank out a little bit further, which is going to push the dock further out to the cove or the channel area. But yeah, you can see there's tons of boulders here. And this is that rock wall that I dropped in on right there at the beginning when I said there's a ledge and then we dropped down. So here's a good, uh, good shot or good view of it to kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, and you can see it's probably about, uh, if I had to guess, maybe seven, eight foot tall. So, uh, yeah, if they had to drill post all the way through that, that's going to be a, a long, hard push to get those wooden posts down through all that rock. So, uh, but I'll definitely make note of that for them as well. Um, but we're going to go ahead and come up, regroup, and then, of course, we're going to survey the center of it as well. Okay. So is this the shoreline, Drew? Yeah. Okay. There. So all of this is solved. I lost you there for a minute. <laughs> That's all right. Next dip. It's thirty one feet. And we fell to four poles. Not right by them. I'm gonna do we're gonna start here in the center and go straight down it. Okay. Um there's a lot of debris on the sides, which they can get through the debris, that's not a problem. And it felt pretty soft, but we need to take, and I meant to bring a piece of rebar. We need to take it and see how far we can jam it down the bottom because the dock builder told the uh, homeowner they need at least four to five foot of penetration. That's what they said. So I know ours go a lot deeper on the deep section that we've got, the 40 foot section of our docks, but it's all soft. So I want to see what the softness is like here. So I want to hit this center location and go straight down once again i guess due north um yeah due north and one of the things i did so i didn't get lost there i knew the back of the boat was at 28 feet right i knew our max depth was going to be around 35 feet so once i got down and i hit let's say 31 foot i knew i was slightly past the end of the dock that's when i made my 90 degree turn to west that helped me stay in line with where i was at and sure enough i ran right smack into that metal pole in the corner and then i made another 90 degree turn and was able to come right back up so that's kind of how we use navigation too to determine where we're at now that we've done the perimeter let's go down together and you're kind of we're going to be we're not going to see each other on this one but i want you to just kind of go down watch your computer you know 31 is where we turned at right or where i turned at so just watch your computer when you get to 31 feet you can either turn around and come back just follow your silt cloud back up or if you want to go out to about 35 feet make a slow safe ascent to the surface you can as well but what we're doing now is just looking what's underneath uh because if they do a fixed dock versus a floating dock they're going to have to put poles all alone inside and outside of this thing too so we need to see what's up underneath directly um as you're going down just kind of judge if you see a long stick or something pick it up ram it down in the dirt guesstimate how deep you can get it does that make sense yeah all right like i said you can either go down when you hit about 31 32 feet turn around come right back here or if you want to pop up at the end pop up the end there's not enough boats out right now for it to matter so i'll leave that decision up to you 
but let me know what you're going to do so that I can either pop up the same spot or just come back here. Pop up out there. So if that's the case, go to 35 feet, relax, slow, safe ascent, listen for boats, and then I'll see you once I get to the top. All right, guys, on the second part of this survey, we're just basically doing the same thing, except instead of going around the perimeter of the dock, we're going to go straight through the center. So we're going from the south side all the way to the north side. And yet again, we're running right smack straight into debris just as soon as we get down there. Uh, there you can see another one of the, the covers for the solar lights. Um, but as soon as we drop straight down through this debris, we'll come straight into those boulders again. Um, and then there direct below me, that is the uh, ledge. So we guesstimated that ledge starts around there. You can see I'm kind of tapping on it. We're, we're going to say that it's starting around the six foot and then it drops down somewhere between say 12 and a half to 15 feet. So it's about a six to seven foot ledge, if you will. Um, but we're going to go ahead and drop straight down off of that, straight to the bottom, and just see what we can see under here. Uh, we did find some interesting items. I don't know if the current owners dropped them down in there or if, um, or if the previous owners of this property uh, lost them down in there, but uh, you, you should see them here shortly. But once again, I'm just following my compass there, my computer, the navigational heading, and of course we're following the sloping bottom. There's one of the interesting items. We found an old dust buster, if you remember what those are just those little handheld vacuum cleaners but uh but yeah still very soft here we were able to probe about a foot and a half yet again that was just with our arms um you know i did forget to take a piece of rebarb just to stick down in and see how far i could go but um yeah we're just probing now here we are coming across another section of a tree and it was actually two trees one on my right one on my left as well um, this can create entanglements for us as divers but if we're very careful you can kind of pile right through it or just go right over top of it and then um and of course be safe with it as well but i am making notations of where they're at and what depth they're at as well uh, as i stated before since they're going to be rebuilding this dock and replacing the current uh, metal poles with wooden post then of course um, they're going to have to pile drive through that or possibly even drop some type of hook system and drag it out of their way they of course the they being the dock builders may hire us to come back in and move that debris as well super easy to do we throw lift bags on it lift it up or drag it to a deeper depth to get it out of their way uh, here i'm signaling over to travis that i have located something that i want to keep for myself and i actually located an anchor system and you're going to see very briefly it goes pitch black this is why it's very important that you are very comfortable when you do dives like this. Yes, this is a very slight overhead environment that we're dealing with. We're not very deep. I think we're about 30 foot here, uh, but we're in an overhead environment. It's a dock system. It's got a boat in the middle of it. So, uh, and we're dealing with black water. Now, once again, the reason it's black here is because I am trying to retrieve this anchor. Now, what I'm going to do instead of trying to swim this anchor up, I'm going to mark it. So here in a minute, you're going to see Travis's light come back. Uh, he's going to give me a little bit of light to, to operate with. I'm going to deploy an SMB and tie off to the anchor system that I've located. And then once we get back up on land or get on to the vessel itself, I can drive over and then, of course, pull this anchor up. Uh, it doesn't hold much value to most people, but to me it does. We, we always can use a spare anchor. We have three vessels that we use for uh, public safety, salvage, and commercial diving. And, of course, it's always nice to have a spare anchor as well. And so that's what you're seeing me do now. So I had to dig it out of the mud first and foremost. That's why it went black all of a sudden. But uh, now that I got a little bit of light to work with, you're going to see. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my DSMB. Travis is going to hold the light for me just so I can see, you know, basically what I'm doing here. And then I will open up the SMB deploy it up to the surface and then of course uh, tie it off so that we can retrieve it and it's amazing the lines that we use it's just typical spool line or cave line whatever you want to call it it's some pretty strong stuff uh, we we have tied it upwards of 25 and 30 pound anchors before and pulled them up by hand so yeah and i am of course making a note here as you can tell we are right at the edge of the dock i want to make sure that when i deploy this smb i'm not directly under the dock I want to make sure that I'm away from it a little, little ways. So that's, again, why I check my depth. Based off what my sonar reading was, I know that I'm out past the dock because I believe it was like 28 feet to the back of the vessel, and then I had a couple of feet. So based off the incline that I'm on, I think where I'm at now is going to be a, a safe place to actually deploy this SMB. So I'm going to deploy it really quick and shoot it up to the surface. 
and then uh, we can tie off and then head on up together because we've pretty much finished our survey at this point. We surveyed the uh, entire perimeter and of course we surveyed straight down the center of it as well. Made notations of all the different hazards, the bottom composition, the bottom contour. Once again, bottom composition tells us what type of bottom it is. Bottom contour tells us the layout of the land. We was able to document uh, anything from depth to any hazards uh, to navigational headings, the whole nine yards. Um, so once we get to the top, we will kind of close out what we're going to do with the survey, the reporting process and all that. And then um, we can file that with the, uh, the homeowner and then, of course, the dock builder as well. But there you can tell them, you can see I told Travis it's time to go up. We've kind of completed our job. We're going to make a slow, safe ascent to the surface. Now, you will notice we're not going to do a safety stop here. There's no point in doing a safety stop. We were only at about 31 foot max. So, um, you know, we really didn't collect enough nitrogen for it to even matter. Uh, so it's not a big deal for us to do a safety stop. But by all means, if you're doing work like this and you feel the need to do a safety stop, then by all means do it. Uh, there you can, you can see I'm telling him, hey, let's come up the line. Once again, we have a marker at the surface. We always want to come up that line versus just doing a free ascent. That way, if there are any butters in the area, hopefully they won't drive right over us. Um, and of course, and there I'm doing a little comparison. You guys know I just switched over recently to the ratio dive computer and I wanted to compare it to the Genius. Uh, I believe it's bright enough for me to be honest with you, so it's pretty cool to see that too. But we're going to come on up here to the surface and, uh, and I'll kind of give you some final thoughts on surveys and, you know, why we do them, how we do them, and um, what the reporting process is as well. And then we'll kind of go from there. And if you guys have any questions on underwater surveys, please put me a comment down below. Ask me a question. I'll be glad to answer any question that you have. Uh, and I can give you some guidance if this is something that you want to get in. Uh, hopefully I can give you a little bit of guidance as well on how you can get started in doing underwater surveys. You don't have to have a lot of certifications for this. But, of course, open water, not diver, navigation is all uh, definitely a must, in my opinion, if you want to get started in this. All right, so we just got out. We just got done with the survey. I've got a lot of mapping to do, but basically what we did is we just followed this dock all the way around, and then uh, we documented quite a bit of stuff, got the depth, got the composition. Basically, the rock wall is going to stop probably 20 foot down into it, and then, of course, we, uh, we swim all the way out. And I don't know if you can see it, but if you look right over there, I shot a buoy. That buoy is actually attached to an anchor so we was able to find an anchor system yeah so we're going to pull the boat over here pull that anchor up so it's just so we can have a spare one here but uh then i gotta get back to the shop do a report for the client let the client turn it into the dock builder and then of course they're going to uh, hopefully get them a new dock built get new dock poles put in but yeah hope, guys i really hope you enjoyed that video that's basically how we do surveys we just swim around see what we can see and document as much as we can and then of course i'll draw up a, a map and do a report for the clients as well that's going to do it for today travis did you learn anything i learned a lot what did you learn lot. it's a lot harder to follow underwater <laughs> than it is above water it is and that, that's why we map it up top too and get our heading so that we can follow our compasses as because we're doing at, it. at one time you you know i couldn't see you but yep. i knew where we were going yep so i knew how to get there and, and then you're true you know follow the descent of the, the land yep and you always know which direction you're going yep so it, even if you're not good at reading the compass which you need to be to do stuff like this but like he was saying you could follow the the sloping incline down to let you know that you're going in the right direction and if you saw during the video a couple of times we ran into those poles that let us know that we were where we should be we used of course the transducer from our sonar here to uh check our depth so we could follow our computers to let us know when we reach that depth and we can make the left hand turn or in this case turn to the west this was pretty easy survey because everything do north was just straight out and then we can make straight 90 degree turns which made it easy but that's going to do it for today guys i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did give me a big thumbs up big definitely thumbs share up, it if you got any questions comments concerns drop me a comment down below and i'll try to answer it. but that's going to do it for today take care god bless and we'll see you in the next video